Hi there everybody and welcome to another episode of Mouth Off where today we're going to review a film where we've also seen it in a cinema. It's the biggest release of the year. It's Tenet. Woo! <laughs> Not Tenant. Like some, some people in the comments on um, reviews were saying, were complaining that we said Tenant, but it's not, it's Tenet. 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 Who tenet. said Tenant? I don't know. Nobody said Tenant. But uh, now I'm confused. Tenet. Tenet. Or maybe it's ten the English accent. Tenet. tenet. John, John David Washington is David Tenant. David, uh, <laughs> spoiler oh i should that's say a spoiler. That's before, a I, spoiler before i introduce these two funny people uh, i should say this review is non-spoiler i haven't seen the film yet so if these two say anything that they shouldn't i will be just as cross as you so we'll say that so today i'm joined by linda merrick hello and scott davis hello uh, not Stephen Pape, because he hasn't seen it yet, because he's in Margate, Margate, <laughs> uh, and he decided to prioritise that over reviewing this film. Disgraceful. However, he will be back, no doubt, sometime soon. So, guys, uh, like I say, I've not seen the film yet. You both saw it yesterday. It was another very well-organised screening where there weren't many people in the screen. You saw it at the IMAX, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, in Waterloo, was it? So the yeah, big, right. the big monster IMAX, and how many people did you say were there, Scott, in your screening? About about fifteen. I mean, it's a four hundred odd seater yeah. like theatre. All dotted it? around in different places. Yeah. So about twenty on mine in my really? one. Twenty so seventy five. They, they hats off to Warner Brothers and Odeon, BFI, etc. for everything, health mm. and safety, and everything else. It was it was very well very well done. You have a bit a bit of extra patience in terms of. It might be the same for public screenings in terms of leaving the auditorium, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. it was done very, very well. So row by row. Uh, that that um, yeah, it gives you it gives you a good feeling as to how they're going to kind of regenerate the cinemas, which is yeah. that's good. And, and so there's the, sorry, on, all the seats were really brilliantly spaced out between mm. people, and um, people just sat in their seats all the way through it. It was actually I'm actually really impressed by the way they've done this. Yeah, it's yeah. good. And it's good. Like Scott just said, it's good that, you know, hopefully cinemas, I'm sure they will because they'll have to follow guidelines and everything else. But <laughs> anyway, all that aside, Tenet, should we, Scott, do you want to tell us uh, the, uh, the the overview of what the film's about and then <clears throat> let us know what you thought of it in a non-spoilery way? Sure. So Tenet is the new film by Christopher Nolan. That's it. <laughs> no, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> so we need to know. Brilliant. Uh, brilliant. End of review. No. So Tenet. Um, it's it's hard to. I've I've looked on IMDb as to what they've said. So I will try and say what they've said and not give anything away. So essentially, you've seen for those of you who've seen the trailers. Uh, Linda didn't see any of the trailers, so she went yeah. in completely blind. Uh, so this is a espionage thriller. Uh, there's there's elements of James Bond. There's elements of Jason Bourne, lots of different things in there uh, that deals with um, a special group of people who are trying to stop World War Three, instigated by a Russian arms dealer played by Sir Kenneth Branagh with a nice little, uh, yes, he's a bit over the top in places, but hey. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Branagh, don't say that. <laughs> um, and one of, uh, the, 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 one of the groups that are trying to, to stop him, the main group that are trying to stop him is called Tenet. Uh, uh, one of their uh, members is played by John David Washington, who you'll know from Black Klansman. And without giving too much away, but for those who have seen trailers, Chris Nolan has always been so interested with time. In this one, he is interested with moving time. That's as much as I'm going to say on that. You've seen from the trailers that, you know, bits and bobs in there, but I'm not going to say too much more. Robert Pattinson's part of this ensemble. Uh, Elizabeth DeMickey is part of the ensemble as well. She plays Kenneth Branagh's wife. I think that's enough. And they they have to try and stop this plot of of um, World War Three on the horizon to do with nuclear arms, to do with lots of other things. And there's other things that go <laughs> on, and it's hard to say anything because it's so. It's a story that there's the, uh, lots of stuff that he's done before in other movies, whether it's Interstellar, whether it's Inception, whether it's Dunkirk, whether it's the, the Batman movies, Back to the Prestige, Memento. He's always been interested in time and humanity and how humanity deals with time you know it's kind of time is kind of our prison in some respects and he's very interested in how you navigate time and stuff like that so this is his big kind of crescendo with that subject uh and he's put a lot of uh his love of james bond in there as well and this is you know like in, in inception a lot of people have said this is him secretly trying to make a james uh, bond. Yes, it yes. kind of it kind of is in a way but it's got all the elements you would expect from christopher nolan and uh the more we talk about it 
uh, the less the less we can I, say. The less I can say. So I can't really go any further than that. As it as suffice to say, it's a Christopher Nolan movie. Most people are in just from that statement. Yeah. So I'm just going to say as well, the all the images I'm putting up are all from the I think the final trailer. So there won't. There's nothing that you if you've seen the trailers, there's nothing you won't see that you haven't seen in the trailer already. Um, Linda. So let's get on to. Is it any good? Uh, since we can't say what it what happens. <clears throat> yes it is very 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 good it is very good um i think it's um a little confusing in parts but that's fine because we we expect that from nolan and if you were confused by uh inception uh you'll be even more confused by this but what i really like about the film uh, again as i said i mean as you mentioned scott i i have not i'm someone who has deliberately stayed away from watching and reading anything about the film before seeing it and i i kind of you get rewarded if you do that and i'm really i'm not into a sort of drawn out uh trailer after trailer after trailer i just want to go and see the film especially a film like this where it, it sort of its premise hangs on a big secret. Um, what I liked about this, despite it being extremely confusing in parts, is that it makes you work really hard at understanding it. And I love that. I like being challenged by clever sci-fi. And when people talk about sci-fi, they always think it's MCU or DC or superhero stuff. That is not what my sci-fi is. My sci-fi is stuff that deals with um, humanity with uh, a human humanist subject people you know uh, and i think my my love for christopher nolan's work um increases with each, each film because i think he understands where the world is going and where he, he what he's trying to do here is sort of explains explain his world view and how things function um it, it gets a little bit sort of too confusing in parts but i don't think i think if you decide to see it more than once it actually works better i've only just seen it once and i think i will go and see it again once it's out properly uh was I, it I just, right I, scott you said that for the press screenings that you were offered and both of you yeah. Linda, that at the end of the yeah. first screening you saw they said if you want to come back again yeah, they did. Yeah. And I've never heard that happen before, unless never. it's been an issue. I, in all the years I've I've uh, I've reviewed stuff and gone to press screenings, I have never been told uh, asked by um, anyone to, to if I wanted to come back and see it. And having seen the film, because we got set, we were told that at the beginning of uh, before the film started. Having seen the film, I totally understand why. Um, again, uh, I really I think if you are confused by it the first time around please do go and see it again because more things will unravel i'm sure and i i wish i had the time to go back again before writing my review but i don't have the time obviously um yeah uh, so far i mean I, i'll talk more about the, the 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 performances after scott's told us what he thinks of it first um so yeah scott what Jeez, are scott. your views what did you think <laughs> Scott. Um, yeah, I would agree with you. I think it's a fantastic uh, trick of Christopher Nolan's that his film is so great yet so confusing that you have to go back and see it a second time. It's such a clever trick. <laughs> There's not many films that have that. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at something like, you, you know, with Marvel and stuff, obviously you want to go back and, and see, you know, like with Endgame, for example, you want to go back and see all the the big moments and everything else. But with this, you're going back because you want to know what the hell is going on. It's very, it's a very confusing film, but I don't think it's a confusing film that should put anybody off. It's confusing no. in the best way. There's, so, it's such a rich, diverse um, mixture of so many different things, and he's trying to navigate a story that, in its, in essence, is very confusing. When we can't really talk about the subject matter, but when, you, when you, once you've seen it, you'll understand what we're talking about in the sense that it's such a, such a mad theory that he's trying to, to put across in this in this movie that it takes it was going to take a second go around to just cue into the to the narrative and to what people are saying in terms of that particular part of the story you can see this as a big event movie as all christmas movies there's great action there's great sequences lots of like if you can see it in imax and we saw it imax 70 millimeter it looks yeah. incredible i mean it looks absolutely incredible uh and this is very much like a James Bond movie in the sense that they go to seven, eight, nine different locations. They're in India, they're in Norway, they're in London. It's everywhere across the globe. It's a globe-trotting movie. 
Uh, and I, but everything you love about Christopher Nolan is in there. He's he's a big spectacle guy. He loves spectacle. You know, he's a director that whenever people ask him about his favorite movies, he always talks about 2001. He talks about Indiana Jones. He talks about Star Wars. And this is that. But this is a very smart movie. Uh, so smart that you need to go back again because it makes you feel kind of dumb. But in the best yeah. way, you're kind of like, yeah. I don't quite understand. You know enough to keep you going through the end and kind of understand. But there's a few moments where you will naturally just go, what? But it, not in the not in a bad way. No. You will look into it and you'll think, I need to watch it again to really just just not... Because the first time you go, you enjoy the spectacle of it. The second time, you can kind of... You know the spectacle. You know what's coming. You can really key in and tune your brain into the, the kind of the mechanics of what he's trying to do, which are very, very big, very, very uh, unique ideas. And I think he pulls it off very, very well. For a lot of audiences, again, they will say, they will come out and say they're confused, but I think most people will say, yes, I was confused. However, I want to go back and see it again. And I think that's the best kind of movie. If you want to go back and see it again for that reason, I think he, it's very, there's very few directors that can make you want to part, especially for the you know normal public, part with your money again to see a movie that's you know he that's the thing we've known i love all through his movies he never panders to his audience he tells you the story this is the story i'm trying to tell just go with it you know won't insult your intelligence just go with it and if you don't quite understand it go and see it again because the second time your brain will be kind of cued into it a bit better and yeah. uh, you will in, you will enjoy it it's a really rich really incredible story there's some fantastic performances the score is incredible from Ludwig Gurinson. Uh, not Hans Zimmer this time. Yeah, uh, he was it's very team. Zimmer. It's very Zimmer, though. I mean, very Zimmer esque. I mean, yes. He, you know, I I I, I think if you're going to do a, a Zimmer sound, just get Hans Zimmer to do it personally. Yeah, I think because he know. was doing Dune, that's why he's not. He hasn't done this. He 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 yeah. turned down Nolan because uh, Dune is one of his like the one one of the things he always wanted to do if he ever got the chance. Anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of everything that you expect from Nolan movie, it's in there in Spades. Uh, but you will need a second go around, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also really liked the the mixture of uh, sort of CGI with other stuff, uh, with the sort of live action stuff that he does really, really well. Um, when I I think for me, even though I mean I, I'm really interested in sort of the, 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 how his film looks. I'm really also interested in the people he picks to play these parts. Now, I was I, for me, I think the standout. I mean, uh, John David Washington obviously is brilliant, and everyone else is brilliant. For me, the standout with Robert Pattinson, I just adored him in this. He plays this character. We, I'm not going to tell you what the character is or who he is and what his part is in this, but I love that uh, there's a, a sort of a a really weird campy energy about this character uh, with a sort of cut glass English accent. I think he said in an interview on GQ or a while ago that he had based it on uh, Christopher Hitchens, you know, the, the famous sort of philosopher, writer. And I can see that. But to me, it's, it's, a, it's a very old fashioned kind of English character that he's playing and he really lands it. And I... You know, I just couldn't take my eyes off him because every time he opened his mouth, I was like, well, you know, like I, I just wanted to hear more what, of what he had to say. Um, in general, I think uh, the, the casting is superb as ever with Nolan. Um, just really uh, impressed by it all around. Um, I think, again, as I say, I, I'm, I, I worry that people might be a little bit confused, but I just want to put your mind at rest. If you are confused by it, it's okay to be confused by it because that's the whole point of, of a Nolan movie. He wants you to work for, he's not a, the spoon feeding film, filmmaker type type of filmmaker. He's, he's someone who, I mean, it, it might sound a little bit cliche to say he wants you to work for your sort of, for the film. Uh, I just want, I, I want to be challenged to buy an idea. And I, I feel like loads of sci-fi nowadays doesn't challenge you, just rehashes the same kind of uh, tropes and sort of signifiers year after year. And I just, I think Nolan is the, possibly the only person doing this kind of stuff, even, and being so brave and not worrying about, about it not landing is for me uh, what makes it uh, even more even more sort of exciting to look at. Um, 
just absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, the one thing I, I will say about the sort of the gender roles in the film, uh, I don't, I think I'm allowed to say this because it doesn't sort of uh, break any kind of like, you know, it's, it's not spoilery. Um, I think for a film that is so innovative, so has such innovative ideas, so such modern ideas, I found the gender roles very, very old fashioned and very classic. Uh, whether that is deliberate or not, I have no idea, but I, I'm sure, I'm sure you know, I, I'm sure sort of loads of takes will be written about this in the coming weeks. God help us all <laughs> when that starts happening. Um, but I did find I did find the gender roles very sort of, you know, like very classic, very, very sort of um, very traditional, uh, which I, which kind of surprised me. Mm. What did you think? Yeah, I think it's very it's, it, I think it's um, he's obviously wanting to he talks a lot about um, the spy who loved me as one of his uh kind of i guess uh, influences on on this particular movie in terms of his love of bond and i think you're right i think that that stamp is very much taken through those those roles in the sense that it's very it's a very old-fashioned movie in that sense you know the, the the men are written in a certain way the women are written in a certain way they're not particularly uh 21st century molded if you like so yeah. i think you could put that down to that whether that's right or wrong you know that's that's for as you say that's for the hot takes to yeah yeah <laughs> I, I i think there's there's definitely some there's definitely um some talk about that in the sense that i think there's definitely some some opinions to be had about that but that aside i agree with the performances i thought pattinson was fantastic oh. uh, I, I, there's some echoes of bruce wayne in there which i really liked i thought i could see little bits of bruce wayne coming in and I, if he plays him similar to that i think we're in for a mm -hmm. in for a very unique treat with uh, his, with his batman uh john david washington is great i thought elizabeth debicki was superb oh. the whole way through um the only bum note was maybe kenneth brenner i think uh, oh, yeah. i thought he was good but i think he he's probably he was probably allowed off the leash a little bit in terms of <laughs> he's, in, in the same way that you talked about the gender roles in terms of a villain he's very much an old fashioned yeah villain villain, villain yeah. you know what i mean so i think he had enough he had some room to explore and some room to go over the top i thought he was good but he was the only performance bum note for me in that sense and i'm not saying he's bad i thought he was, yeah, he was yeah, good yeah, for yeah. what he needed to do but i think everybody else is 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 great uh and yeah I, across the board i thought it was very very good but i think pattinson is the is the standout uh for me i mean if there are any acting uh oscars to be uh, sort of given to in this film <laughs> i would be very surprised if pattinson is not there at the end of the year genuinely very surprised and actually quite miffed if yeah. if, the, if it doesn't happen True. because uh, i think he's it's possibly his best performance he's probably owned uh, one isn't he he's had a good you yeah because it's, it's yeah. he's made a lot of indie films that are yeah. smaller are smaller releases but but amazing roles in them Mm. He is yeah. just magnificent I, and also very good looking, you know, let's not forget that. <laughs> I was going to say, with all of this Robert Pattinson loving, Linda, I yeah. was going to say, did, do you fancy him a little bit? But, you know, no, I no, I mean, uh, you know, he's not my type, but, you know, he's, but he uh, is good I, I have always liked him as an actor. I've always, even in the um, the vampire movies, I mean, the, the, uh, I, I always um, thought he was the, sta I, yeah, whatever, what are they called? Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. Twilight. Um, I, I, I thought I always thought he was the standout performance in that because I think he really can do brooding, but he can also do like really menacing. And I, um, I've, I've always liked him as an actor, and I think I think he's fantastic in a lots of. I mean, he's the, in the Safdie Brothers film. Film he was really, really good. What was time. the space film he did last? High Life, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, what a film life. that is. Yeah, yeah. Very good, yeah. He can do brooding and menacing really well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who could he play? <laughs> interesting, interesting. I don't know. Anyway, right, more, I've got to, I've got to, ra I've got to wrap yeah. this up because we've gone on longer than we normally do. So well, that's I need, all right. it's I need, it's Tenet. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's a temp, <laughs> temp pole summer movie that's actually coming out in a cinema. So we'll talk about it a bit longer. Guys, scores. Linda, go. Oh, uh, Scott, you go first. You go first, because I'm kind of a little bit worried about here. Four out four. of five. Okay, I go four and a half. Ooh. I, uh, I, it lost just a little, uh, half a star for me, uh, because Not I enough was... enough Robert Pattinson? No, well, no, I think I was less convinced by the, the way the gender roles were depicted. Okay. 
Uh, I think that lost a little bit of sort of cool uh, for me. But other than that, I, I, I think it's a near perfect movie, uh, quite frankly. And um, yeah, I, I did like it a lot. Good. Yeah, four, Scott, four go on, for Scott. me. No, sorry, I was just going to say four for me. The only thing is, I, I, my brain only slightly downgraded it for two reasons. One, just not because of the confusing element, but I think I'm reviewing it for the first time I watched it. So that, yeah, yeah. It. And yeah. also, uh, I, I gave it a little bit less because I wasn't wholly convinced with Kenneth Branagh. I have to say. Fair enough. Fair but, enough. Uh, fair four poor old Ken. Is, uh, four stars is a is a is a is a pretty good mark. He's it's, still it's, a legend. It's not his, not his best film because he has such high standards and he has set such a high bar over the last decade but his 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 four star movies are pretty spectacular let's be honest and like you say maybe when you watch it again you'll be like Do you know what exactly yeah this is a five star exactly. film but yeah. first time watching it reviewing it on the first time four stars for me i think i think you are right uh, the review should be on your first sort yeah, of, yeah you know yeah, I can adjust my letterbox afterwards. Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or your IMDb. Four, you can read four, my. You can read my review on hey, hey you guys when the embargo lifts. Four is com. not a bad score. Five, five p.m. Really, yeah. Five, five p.m. on the twenty-first of August. Uh, an actual film in an actual cinema, written by Scott Lindis, review for the Mirror, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And so and you can read Jewish her review Chronicle. there, and the Jewish Chronicle. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, both of you, for joining me and giving us your thoughts. Uh, no spoilers there whatsoever. I can still watch it and feel happy. Uh, don't forget. I said I forgot to say this at the beginning. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and make sure when you see the movie, which is released, I think next Wednesday. Is that right, Scott? 26th uh, yeah. of yeah. August. Do like, subscribe, uh, comment. Let us know what comment. you thought of it. If yeah. you uh, if you uh, disagree with what the guys are saying, <laughs> please then, do uh, comment. Don't comment on um, Linda. Hang on, I can't, I can't go. On. <laughs> Who knows how it works? But um, yes, uh, we love hearing from you. So do yeah. make sure you let us know. Also, and, uh, oh, go yeah, on, sorry. If you are going to comment, please comment and do criticize us, but don't be yeah. nasty. Be nice. Yeah, be nice comments. in your comments, yeah. but say what you think. Yeah. Uh, put like, like heart emojis and stuff. <laughs> after and hey, we love you. <laughs> we love you. Love you. What a rubbish review, heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave's an idiot, heart. Uh, right. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next review. Who knows what it will be, and we'll no doubt see you soon. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!